What's going on guys and welcome back to Planet Coaster. We are back in Cedar Flags and we are going to be building a lot of rock structures in this episode. So yes, uh, we've been working on the Alpine River Rush for some time now and we are finally, I think, at a point where I can probably get a POV uh, video put together for you guys and then we can continue on building other things in the park. But this is starting to come together and as you can tell most of this episode is probably gonna be landscaping i say probably i mean it is entirely landscape driven and we're gonna be doing some tweaks and modifications to the pathing that we have set up as well so it's gonna be kind of interesting if that's your thing if you're just here for the roller coasters there are no roller coasters in this episode so i apologize for that but we are getting right into it and we are going ahead and aligning those river walls with rocks. I say river, it's really the ride wall or the sides of the ride rather. And we uh, basically just wanna make it look like it's something interesting and cool. So as you're riding down this river, uh, you have to keep in mind that this ride has basically 360 degrees of view. So the passengers in the ride and in the rafts can look at basically anything at any given time. So. Working off of that principle, we kind of want to make all of the detail work around this ride pretty intricate. So you always have something interesting to look at. Now, we're also going to be going through and doing a little bit of the path work over the river and <laughs> over that bridge and through the woods. But uh, no, we have a little bit of that and I'll talk about that when we get to it. But what we're doing right now is just kind of doing something that I like a lot here. So I really wanted something to break up all of these rocks that we've placed here. And to do that, I've kind of figured to put some sort of like flower bed down, although keep it kind of natural. So you'll see me here and there, open up some space and spray some dirt and mulch down. And it's really just a break in that rock. So a lot of the terrain around this area has been painted as a rock texture, but obviously plants can't really grow in a rock. And I'm saying this as we're putting a plant in a rock, but uh, never mind that. So we've put some of the mulch texture down and kind of created these little encapsulated beds that we have growth coming from. Now, I love this little here and there, like green space that breaks up these rocks. And of course, you're gonna see that more when we get into the live portion and I'll go through that a lot. But you saw over a few seconds ago, uh, we did a little bit of path. Uh, well, it's not really a path. It was like a little bit of a dirt trail that went across kind of the ride and then into that cave down there. So I really wanted to add a little bit of something there. And that's something that, again, we can check out as we get into the live portion. But it's kind of a cool little Easter egg type thing uh, that you can kind of know or that you'll see as you're floating down the river. Now, we go in and try to make this path something pretty interesting. It was such a pain to get this thing to line up correctly. Now, I didn't really want stairs on the one side of it, and then I wanted stairs on the other side. So getting those to kind of work correctly, it was very, very annoying. And I cut a lot of the uh, fussing around with the terrain out of the time lapse just to, you know, keep things moving along here. But yeah, there were, if you watch the live streams, you knew how frustrating it was to get that little path looking okay. And in the end, it does look pretty good. But yeah, it was just kind of annoying. But here we go with some of the spray paint and the mulch tool. Again, this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. And we're just creating these little pockets that we have growth and and trees and like green greenery, if you will, growing in here. And it really adds such a good touch. I love it so much. And then of course we have to just arrange all of these rocks in a way that's kind of natural, but also I guess adds like that barrier between the terrain and it's, it looks like it's holding the terrain up from falling into the river. So yeah, it was just a lot of trying to keep things a little bit more interesting here and there. And it was kind of difficult to achieve because you only have so many rocks to play with. But yeah, I mean, it, in the end, it's just turning rocks and making them look different. And it, it really worked out well. But you're seeing me right now go through and uh, delete some of the path work that we had. It is always very nerve wracking when you go back and delete a path in Planet Coaster. If you've played this game, you probably know that. Uh, it seems like you get a path that's set up just right, and maybe something's just a little bit wrong with it, 
and you're like, ah, oh, we have to delete this, and I'm not sure if it's gonna go back in the same way. But luckily, uh, we got it all kind of sorted out, and really, we're trying to create a little bit of a cool path area around this. This is getting a little more finalized. I said last episode that it may not be a final path layout over here, and we're working toward getting that done now. We still have a very weird space in between the two paths that we're going to have to fill with something, and I have a kind of a ballpark plan for that that will probably be working on in the next episode, but we'll see how that all kind of plays out. But again, we're just creating some landscape here. There were a lot of just open space, or there was a lot of just open space around this area, and just using those rocks to not entirely build like a wall of rock, but using them kind of as an accent was really what I was trying to do here. Now, I'm not sure if it works out. I'm guess I guess you guys will be the judge of that in the comments. But uh, yeah, it was kind of... I, it was something you I wanted to build up the terrain and spots and I wanted the rocks to be there as kind of that like Barrier like I was talking about but then in between these little Rises in the terrain. I wanted to have some really awesome landscaping Around the area just to make it look a little bit natural, but a little bit like we planned it to be Landscaped so there is I, I feel like there's a difference between landscaping and nature work and sometimes if you want stuff to look more natural, you just kind of throw it here and there and then make basically all of the uh, ter or all of the trees grow out just randomly. But when you want something to look a lo little bit more landscaped, you want to go in there a little bit more meticulously and make it look like you basically planted those trees or bushes by yourself. So that's really what we went for. And we had a little bit of pathing. Luckily, this last little section of the path that we just placed wasn't as tedious to place, and really, if you want nice slopes in your path work and not like jagged, uh, I, it's really weird, because when a path goes down on terrain in this game, it just masks the terrain exactly how it is. So if you want that to be smooth, you have to go in and actually make the terrain itself smooth. So really wasn't that big of a deal, but it can get very tedious, and if uh, you're struggling to get a really smooth, slopey path, I completely understand why. But anyway, we're going through and lining those paths again. This is something that I kind of want to maybe stray away from a little bit more moving forward, and that is using rocks to kind of line the curbs of the path. Now, it looks great, but I think we've used it quite a bit, so I think moving forward, we're going to try to be a little bit more, um, I guess, unique in what we do on the sides of, of paths. So we're going to hopefully be building some more in interesting things out of wood pieces, and then uh, we'll be able to maybe work benches and uh, trash cans into that kind of ordeal a little bit better, because I think that's one thing that we, or at least that I haven't really mastered yet, and that is putting benches in places and making it look like it was meant to be there. It kind of looks like I've just slapped benches all around the place. So making this look a little bit better is probably for the best. But anyway, we're moving on over to the waterfall of the ride. And we're building up this whole area to make it almost look like a cave entrance. This is something that I think the uh, Twitch chat had talked a little bit about. And I, I really like the idea because it was kind of an awkward little area to begin with with that waterfall and it, it now looks like the waterfall has a reason to be coming off of where it's coming off at the top so it looks like uh the water streaming down over a cave and that is super awesome and it's really cool because when you're in the raft itself it looks like you're going through this waterfall and you're not really sure what's behind it because it just looks like a wall of rock and then you get through and you get into this other area and it's just such a nice little little uh thing there now we actually went through in the live stream and we placed some more of the water, uh, like the waterfall jets or whatever you want to call them, and we actually added those to triggers, and you'll see that in the live portion. I believe I cut it out of the time lapse because it took so long to do to make it look okay, and it really wasn't that interesting to watch, so that's something that I guess the live stream people will know how it all worked 
And uh, again, if you want to watch my live streams, the best thing to do is probably to follow me on Twitch or follow me on Twitter because I always post when I'm going live and on Twitter so you guys can tag along and influence these builds. There are so many things that are influenced by the chat when I'm doing a build. It, it's, you guys have such good ideas sometimes and I have to use them, they're that good. But anyway, we're moving down toward the entrance area. Well, it's kind of the exit area of the station for Alpine River Rush and we're doing a little bit of path work. I really didn't like that really strange looking sliver that we had as a bed there. So I widened that out a little bit and hopefully we're gonna be able to turn this path into something better when we build the rest of the area out. And I guess I'll talk about that in the live portion because that's gonna be our next uh, build. But yeah, we had to open this up a little bit just because it was kind of very strange. So I love having this really big, I think it's an oak tree that we just placed. And then of course we had to go through and try to take another retaining wall from the path to the little flower bed that we have now. And it was kind of annoying because the little pieces that we were using didn't exactly line up and weren't spaced out perfectly. So it was kind of annoying. But in the end, I like that it happened because I like this little thing that we're building right now. This is a little bit of a wall. Basically, it's all custom made and we're going to be using this to set up a little bit of a retaining wall here. And it just it comes out really well. Uh, I really like how this looks. And it's one of those things that it was just like, I need to fill this space. What can I do? And I grabbed a couple pieces and I used some influences from the building, the station that we just built. And I was just trying to basically improvise my way through it. And it, and in the end, it comes out pretty nice. And it's pretty nice because it is basically adjustable. You can basically tell it which width you want it to be. And it looks pretty good. So yeah, it's one of those things that just kind of, I just went through the menus and I was just finding pieces, as you can kind of see, that kind of fit together. And then I was like, maybe this will work. And then, you know, you get another piece and you're like, oh, these two will definitely work together well. And then you just kind of build from there. So yeah, it's uh, definitely something interesting. And this is what I was talking about a little bit before when I said I want to do more interesting stuff on these sides of the paths. Because, I mean, when you look at like a path in a theme park, usually there's some sort of barrier there. It's usually not just like a path and then a bunch of open grass before you hit a ride. Like they basically want to maintain where people are walking at all times. So that is really what we were going for when we're doing this kind of stuff. So we we just want to keep people kind of contained and it looks a lot better when you're all said and done with it as well. So we're just making this into a box. And of course we have these paths now and they're kind of in this planter here, but it's okay because we'll put the barrier or the curbs down here. And basically this makes this kind of detail work possible because we now have a way to tell the computer to stop letting people walk through our scenery. And it helps tremendously and it's really awesome. And it really adds a lot of uh, different things that we can do with our path work. Now, uh, the side of the path that is closest to the station from this perspective, we had originally a bunch of open space that I was thinking about maybe putting a uh, planter in there. And then I looked at it, and I'm like, you know what? There's really no purpose for that. So in the end, we deleted the path. And of course, we're going through with the terrain tool, trying to get this smooth. It was kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie. It was even this. Like, you can take this the flatten to uh, surface tool and basically try to get a slope angle that works for you. But it doesn't always work properly. And in the end, we finally get it to work. It was, took a little bit of time, but it looks so good. And I love that we have this now pinched up next to that wall that we have, because before it was gonna look really strange having like a wall with like a planter in it and then having plants outside of the planter. So now we just have this nice little path. It's all nice and tightly constructed now, and it's gonna work pretty well moving forward here. So the final thing that we're gonna be doing here in this time-lapse is some lighting. Again, I've said this many times, but I tend to forget about what to do with lighting, or I tend to forget to place lighting altogether. And it's one of those things that we're gonna have to go through at some point and figure out. But over here, luckily, we don't because 
we actually go through and do a little bit of it. So it's not all done. It's basically just this area. And I have a beef to pick with these lights that I'm placing on these posts here. Uh, they are not area lights whatsoever. They're just accent lights. So I thought it was gonna light up the entire area. It did not. I know you can get around that, but I didn't feel like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know if I like the cheating it's not even a cheat, but it's just like the hokey way that you have to get around the lighting effects sometimes in this game. But in the end, it, it is cool to have accents and it's cool to have those lights on those stairs. That is one thing that I think you have to kind of mind when you're building stairs in this game. They have to be lit up at all times, even at night. So you want to put a bunch of the lights around this area because you don't want people to trip and fall down. And yeah, so I guess that's just about it for this episode. Let's go ahead and head into the live portion and see what we just built. All right, we are live in Cedar Flags and we are taking a look at the far end of Alpine River Rush. Now, I do want to point out that we have a very small area over here that is not quite... Uh, detailed just yet and that is because uh, what is this bird doing get out of here <laughs> anyway uh, that is because we are planning on doing another ride over here and I'm not entirely sure just yet what it's gonna be but the chat in the live stream had suggested possibly doing one of those little car rides not a go-kart but the ride that you basically have a car on a little track and you go for a scenic little ride so i think that's maybe one of those things that we can put in over here and we'll probably have that drive at basically the level of the height of this little basin that the ride is sat in so we'll maybe do a little bit of cool like a barrier or something over here to make that kind of tie in so that's kind of why we left this space empty but you'll notice that the rest of the track is now very nicely detailed. Well, at least I think it's nicely detailed. So we go under the waterfall like we were talking about and into basically a little bit of a, a jungle-ish type thing. It's not entirely like, it's obviously not a jungle, but it's got a lot of greenery, but also a lot of rocks. So what we're trying to do here is guide everybody's view onto this tree instead of uh, basically looking out into the rest of the park, which is blank right now. So we're just, we're basically hiding that and keeping the experience contained. Now you may notice that this ride up top is actually doing something kind of unique and that hadn't been, it hadn't been doing before. And that is dropping water on the side. Now this is the thing that I cut out of the time-lapse because it was very meticulous and boring to watch. But basically we have about 30 or so water jets here and they line up with the raft as it floats down. Now this isn't probably entirely realistic if you're gonna be very picky about it because it looks like that much water would be pouring up as this thing was flying down this. But unfortunately, this ride doesn't really gain that much speed. So basically it's just an effect for the people below. So as they're going through, they can kind of get a little bit of water kind of splashed on them if the boats line up perfectly, which we may see here. Yeah, so we're gonna see a little bit of overflow onto this boat. A little bit. Not much, but you know, it is what it is. And yeah, so this takes us down this way, and this was that little Easter eggy type feel I had over here. I'm not entirely sure. It's not quite done, I don't think, and I don't know if Easter egg is the right word for it, but I love having this little gap in between the scenery here that guests can maybe sit here and look and just see like hey there there looks like there was a path that went through there i wonder where that goes to so that might be tying into future work that we're going to be doing and i'll talk about that in a, a minute or two here but yeah that is something that i kind of just threw in there on a whim and i liked how it kind of came out so yeah that's something we'll tie in, tie into later and of course as you run down this river you can see these little beds that I was kind of, uh, I don't know, extremely excited about in the time lapse, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was, it's just this little area here and there. So anywhere we have green growing, except for like little stuff like patches that are kind of like vine type feel, uh, we have these little beds in here. So we've created a little bit of flat space 
and we put the mulch down and we have a little bit of overgrowth growing in here. Now this kind of ties back into our landscaping versus nature discussion that I talked about in the time lapse and these were meant to be more like nature. So you're gonna see a lot of like not very well kept up and just a little undergrowth here and there. It looks like no one's been down here to pluck the weeds and that, that's the kind of feel that I went for on here. Now as we transition, out onto like more of a path type area, we have a little bit more well kept up areas and this is really what we were going for. So yes, this is more of a landscape feature whereas the things that are closer and harder to get to for people and janitors would be more of a natural growth kind of phenomenon. So I absolutely love this little section right here. This took so long and I talked about it a little bit but it took forever to try to get this curve to look good and this was one of those things that when you were trying to make the the smoothing tool work it just wouldn't work but we finally have this nice sweeping path and i love that it's on an incline the entire way but it's kind of flat no matter which way you're walking up it so yeah it's such a nice little area hopefully we're going to be seeing people walk this way and it looks like this this family just keeps walking up and down these steps. They must really enjoy them. I'm not sure what's up with that. But we have a bench here, and basically, you just kind of get to sit here and watch the rides. And it's such a nice spot. It's a great vantage point. And again, when we get this path kind of connected up to other things, and we were talking about maybe putting a ride in here as well, uh, we'll see more people coming from Alpine River Rush and walking over our nicely put together bridge and over to this way so this should all fill up as we expand the park but it's just one of those things that I took too long to do and it looks so good anyway we moved some of this path work around you saw that in the time lapse it was one of those issues where like I deleted this path and I was like I really hope we can get this back in right and eventually it goes back in right where it needs to go and it looks a lot better than it did before so sometimes in this game when you're building you just need to kind of rough out what you were gonna do and then come back to it and finish it later. And that might mean deleting what you were doing. This rock here may end up being our sign for Alpine River Rush. Then again, we may put a sign right here. So that's the one thing that I think is still left to do for Alpine River Rush. And that is designing the logo and then putting a sign together for it. So that'll be kind of interesting. I'm not sure if I'm gonna time lapse that or if I'll just debut that in the POV uh, video that we're gonna be putting together for this. Now, if you notice, we have a lot less people in line for this ride, and there's actually a lot less people in the park altogether. I've put a hard cap on the amount of guests in the park. I believe it's at two or 3,000, so we're not gonna get those, like, tons and tons of people filtering into this area anymore, but at least we have FPS, so at least that's good. We're gonna move down now to the final area that we worked on, and that was this little bed that we have here, and this beautiful tree. I love how this looks. It's one of those trees that from a distance just looks like a natural tree, and it's one of those trees that's a lot different from what we started in, and I may go back through this area and start putting more like broadleaf type trees around here. So. Right now we just have a bunch of Douglas firs and all that kind of stuff and basically I've kind of shifted to liking these so I wanted to maybe incorporate oak trees and stuff into this a little bit more. I'm trying to keep the uh, area a little bit more diversified and not so I guess one dimensional in terms of uh, tree work and scenery like that so that's something that I should do I guess moving forward but I love this tree, it's it's huge, it kind of obstructs the view, but in all of the right ways. It's just, it hides the building a little bit, but you can still catch angles where it just is such a nice little like feature for the park. And it really provides a lot of shade for this area, which is another thing that nature work needs to do in a park. We have, of course, the path underneath this. I've tried to hide it a little bit. I'm sure I could probably do a little better with that. But for now, I think it looks good, especially when you get down near the uh, guest level. But yeah, this whole bed came together really well. And then of course, the lighting. So I guess that's about it for what we did in the time lapse. I wanna talk a little bit about what we're gonna be doing in the next episode. We're going to be working on this weird, awkward space here. So I have kind of a plan that I guess I can talk to you a little bit about right now. And that is to maybe 
use this little depression in the uh, terrain here and maybe make like a gully or a valley or something over to here. Now, what we're going to do with that is eventually, I think, use like a train and run it through that little valley. And then the train station will be here. And then it'll basically go under this path through this mountainside and then run right next to Alpine Spirit, which is going to be really cool. So we're going to have basically a train track running the entire length of this hill section of the ride. And then it'll come out here and go over the valley and then basically come over to here. Now, it's probably going to be a while until we get the train station done and functioning. But when we do, it's going to take guests from the front of the park to the back of the park. And it's going to be really cool. So we're going to probably start that in the next episode. I guess that's it for this episode. If you liked it, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, of course, thumbs down. And of course, follow me on Twitter if you want to catch the live streams of these builds and hang out. And guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode.